This video is brought to you by Pramp. Pramp is a free online service that allows you to prepare for your upcoming technical interviews. The nice thing about Pramp is that it allows you to practice like you play. The way it works is you sign up for Pramp, which is free, and then you schedule a time that works for you to set up your mock interview. Pramp automatically matches you with a peer at the time that you select, and when the interview starts, you each have 30 minutes to play the role of both the interviewer and interviewee. Prior to the start of the interview, you will be provided a technical interview question from Pramp that you will ask your peer, and your peer will also be given a question that they will ask you during the interview. One of the things I really enjoy about the Pramp service is that it forces you to work under time pressure and also peer pressure, and this is something that you can't quite obtain from just grinding leak code questions or cracking the coding interview problems. So these are great resources, but knowing how to deal with getting stuck in a setting where someone else is watching and assessing you is incredibly valuable and this is something that really pays off to practice. If you want to sign up for Pramp and give this a shot, please check out the sign up link in the description of this video. Using Pramp is 100% free, but using that link helps support my channel. So if you found my content to be helpful and feels as if you could benefit from a Pramp service, then please sign up and give it a try. Videos, we're going to be focused on writing Python code and interfacing with the Kaggle website. So if you're not familiar with Kaggle, it's this website that's really just kind of a data repository. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be writing some Python code to allow us to make use of one of the data sets that Kaggle provides to us on Wine to extract some insights and make some plots and essentially do what you would do as a data scientist when you get uh, some data. So just to kind of give a brief overview, you can skip over this if you're familiar with the Kaggle website. If you're trying to get into data science, this is really a great resource. Kaggle is a website that provides a number of public repositories on data uh, from a whole number of different topics. So I just went to kaggle.com slash datasets, and here we have over 14,000 datasets on a whole number of topics. So for instance, there's datasets on graduate admissions, Google Play Store app data, uh, we have some Amazon Alexa reviews, historical plane crashes, so a whole ton of data sets. And they come in the form of a CSV file or a comma separated uh, value spreadsheet. So that uh, is going to be the data set that is provided from any of these topics. The idea is you download those, they can come in varying sizes, of course some of them are quite big. You download them and in the case of uh, whatever you have access to, you can use something like Python or R to parse those and again, use the skills and tools that a data scientist would use to extract insights from those data sets. And these data sets are just provided if you want to kind of sharpen your skills, if you want to kind of get into the field or if you want to kind of um, you know continue to use your skills as a data scientist. Kaggle also provides competitions. So a number of companies will showcase their own data on Kaggle and they'll provide certain metrics or bars that they want to reach for that data set. And they open these sorts of challenges up to the community and the community can write code and see how accurate each of their models are. And whoever you know has the most accurate model for the particular data set that they provide has uh, access to you know maybe p potential employment opportunities or uh, cash prizes. And uh, it's, it's a nice way to kind of get involved if you're trying to get into the space. So the data set that we're going to be taking advantage of here is the Wine Reviews data set, and I'll link to that as well in the description. And as the description states here, it's just 130K Wine Reviews with variety, location, winery, price, and description. So it's just going to be a CSV file that we're going to download that kind of has each of those as categories. They're just reviews that people have made. It's just kind of a collection or an aggregate source of reviews of wine. So that's going to be kind of the basis of the next series of videos and we're going to be using Python to extract insights, to make plots, and just kind of do the things that a data scientist would do to uh, analyze this data. And if you're not familiar with Kaggle, they have these things called kernels for every data set. So kernels are kind of user submitted blog posts that focus on a particular topic uh, that's focused on the relative data set. So in this case, these are kernels that correspond to the wine reviews. So if we go down here, there's, you know, close to, um, you know, 15, over 1500 kernels. And if we look at these, these are just the user submitted blog posts that focus on one aspect of the data. So for instance, this is just kind of creating, reading, and writing reference. So this is maybe just kind of showcasing how to make use of something like pandas to read that wine data. And you can see here, there's some other uh, data on that. There's, this is written in Python. So the blog post or kernel in this case corresponds to 
you know, code that is written in Python that showcases this this topic. And there's a bunch of really great uh, kernels generally that are submitted by the uh, community. So even in the competitions, users will submit kernels that kind of showcase a very interesting aspect of the data. There's no competition for this particular data set, but it's still a really great starting point if you want to kind of figure out how to uh, extract various insights from the data. And exactly what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be making use of the kernel provided from this user here. So I'll be leaving a link to the description in the description for this post because this is really going to be heavily based on the content of uh, this video. So this user right here, in addition to this user, are the ones that were able to create uh, this kernel. And as I mentioned, we're really going to be focused quite heavily on the content that's provided herein. So let me just give you a sense of what we're going to be doing in this first video. So I assume that you have Python installed, but that's pretty much all I assume. So if you don't have pandas, which is what we're going to be making use of to play with the data that we have. This is a module in Python. I'm going to kind of showcase how to make use of this module and also how to install it. So, so long as you have Python installed, you can run Python on your machine, you should be good. So we're going to follow this as a rubric, it's almost an identical rubric. And again, credit to the authors here because they're, uh, you know, really great writers and they put something very fantastic together that I'm using as a template here. So that's all we need to do. So I'm just going to uh, move over to my text editor here. And in this text editor, I've kind of already written up what we're going to be making use of. So again, if you're familiar with pandas, you can skip this video and you can find me in the next one where we actually extract the data, the wine data. But if you have not dealt with pandas before, then you can follow along in this video and we can step through some of the core functionality of what we're going to be using in pandas. So the first step in this script is what we're going to do is we're going to import pandas as PD. So this is just going to allow us to import the module and then anytime we refer to any part of pandas, we can say PD dot and then access any uh, element from the pandas module. So of course, if you haven't done so, I'm just going to clear the terminal, open up a terminal and type in pip install pandas. So again, I already have this installed on my machine, so nothing will update, nothing will happen here. It will just uh, say that my requirements are already satisfied. If you are, don't already have it, it'll install on your machine and you should be good to go. And just to verify that, going back to this script right here, and by the way, uh, if you're typing this up, uh, you don't have to worry about that. I'll provide a link in the description below to this video so you can actually just download the code, run it, and uh, go from there. So you can either type it along with me or follow along with me, or you can just download the code and uh, follow along appropriately. So just to make sure that you've actually installed pandas properly, just go ahead and run this script. So all I have here is just import pandas as PD. Nothing happened, it just said the execution finished, and that means that we're good to go. So the two core objects that we're really gonna focus on in pandas for extracting the wine information in the following videos are the data frame and series objects. So these are objects that are provided from the pandas module that we're going to be making use of. So again, if you haven't seen this stuff before, we're gonna be going over it in this video so you can get a sense of how these things work, what they are, and how we're gonna be making use of them eventually. So the first thing that we can focus on here is the data frame. So really all a data frame is, it's a table. It contains an array of individual entries, each that have a certain value. So each entry corresponds with a row or a record and a column. So let's take a look at an example just to get a sense of what a data frame is and how I'm actually using it. So I'm saying PD dot. So again, that's kind of the window to the pandas module. That's how we're going to uh, access elements from this um, pandas module, we're going to say dot data frame. So data frame is a class that takes in a certain number of arguments. And in this case, what it's going to take in is a dictionary. So the dictionary is the content in between the curly brace. So this is just a dictionary of key value pairs where we have uh, the first key as the string yes, and the second key as the string no. And the values are the lists 50, 21, and then respectively 131 and 2. So we're really just feeding in into this data frame uh, thing a dictionary, a Python dictionary, and then we're telling pandas to go ahead and create a data frame object with this dictionary. So let's just go ahead and print that out to see what we get. So if we print that out, we see that we get kind of this nicely formatted data frame object where the headings or the columns are yes and no. So those are the key values, sorry, the keys in the dictionary. And then on the uh, row axis, what we have is 0 and 1, so that's just kind of labeling uh, the rows. And then the contents of the rows are going to be split underneath those columns. So for the yes column, first one is the first entry of 
uh, yes. And for the second component of yes, it's the second entry of no here. Oh, sorry, the second component of yes. And same thing for no as well. So it's kind of giving us this nice output that's overloaded to show us this data frame, or to show us how it's parsing the dictionary as a data frame object. So let me just comment that out so we don't get extra input, or output, I should say. So data frame entries are not limited to integers. So we we saw that we, we can store integers in this data frame object. But we can also store things like strings as well. So you can store a whole sorts of um, different types of data types. And one of the things that you can showcase here is we, in addition to just doing numbers, which is what we did over here, or integers, we can also store strings. So what I've done here is I've created another data frame object where the keys are Bob and Sue respectively, and then the contents under uh, each of these, these lists, I liked it, it was awful, pretty good bland. These are kind of reviews that correspond to what Bob and Sue thought of, let's say, maybe some movie or some something that they were given. And if we print this out by running the code, we can see again our headings, Bob and Sue, and then zero and one to note the labeling of the rows. It just by default starts at zero and then goes constant from there. So the first column, first row for Bob, he liked it. And then the next row down is awful. And same thing with, with Sue, so pretty good and bland. So that just showcases that you can put in different data types for the pandas uh, data frame object. So going on, the dictionary list constructor assigns values to that column label. So we saw here that the values that assigned is something started from zero and it goes up. So depending on how many rows you actually define in the dictionary, it's just going to continually uh, increment that, that counter. So it's going to start at zero and keep going up. But maybe we want to kind of give our own custom index labels to the data frame. So instead of just counting from 0 and 1, maybe those rows actually correspond to something that uh, you know is, is relevant to the data that we have. So for instance, maybe what is I liked it, what is pretty good, what is that referring to? Well, maybe it's referring to some product, right? So maybe this is referring to some product A, and this is referring to some product B. So we want some sense of changing the default increment values to something that's actually specific. And the way that we can modify our data frame object to do that is by adding this extra parameter for the constructor of data frame. So in addition to just feeding in this dictionary as we did before, so this is identical, I put in a comma and then also index is equal to this list. So we're passing in an extra parameter where the extra parameter is kind of the, the a list that corresponds to what we want to replace the automatically incrementing numbers with. So in this case, product A and product B. So if we go ahead and print that out, we see that that's replaced now instead of 0 and 1 with product A and product B. So that gives us a little bit more flexibility as to how we can uh, kind of manipulate these data frame objects. So just comment that out. So that's kind of a crash course on the data frame object. But now let's move on to the next core component of what we're going to be using, which is series. So series, by contrast, is a sequence of data values. So if a data frame is a table, as the authors in the, in the kernel po point out, a series is a list. In fact, you can create one with nothing more than lists. So the constructor of a series uh, component in pandas, you can just pass in a list, and that will give you, if you do it like this, pd.series, again, that's part of the pandas module, you can pass in a list to that into the constructor for that thing, and it will give you a series object. So if you run that, we get this nice thing here. Let me just make that a little bit bigger. So we get a uh, row, uh, sorry, I should say a column, of zero through four, and then also another column on the right, which corresponds to the list that we fed in. So the list on the uh, left here, the column on the left is just the auto increment uh, numbers that we kind of saw in the data frame before, same idea there. And then the one on the right is the actual list that we fed in. So it's just automatically going through that list, assigning a number to each one of those, and then printing them out in this way. And then this last component here is just telling us what the data type of the elements that are stored in this series are. So in this case, it's just int 64. Let me just minimize that, make that a little bit smaller. And let me just comment this out. Okay, so finally, a series is, in essence, really a single column of a data frame. So when we're going through a data frame, if you want to just access a single column, that can be, um, that's essentially going to be a series object. So before you can assign column values to the series the same way as before, using an index parameter, uh, I guess I should say, you can assign column values. So as we saw here, 0 through 4, we can change those up and we can actually give those um, an index. So 
series don't have a column name. It only corresponds, it only has one overall name. So if we go ahead and print this out here, let me just step through what we've got. We've got a series object that we're creating from this list. So that's kind of similar how, do we, how we created a series object from the list above here. We're doing the index optional parameter, which is going to uh, replace the column on the left. Again, that's kind of just the auto incrementing labels on the left there. Uh, we're going to replace them with 2015 sales, 2016 sales, and 2017 sales for the three elements in this list. And then the name. So the name is going to, if we print this out, the name is going to give us the uh, extra component here, which is just going to say that all of these uh, elements in the series correspond to data corresponding to a product A. So that's just kind of giving us an extra sense of what this data is actually corresponding to. So if you want to take out an element of a data frame, so data frame is kind of this big table. If you want to take out one column of that data frame and actually manipulate that in some way, then that is going to uh, be accessible to us in a, as a series object. So knowing how to manipulate the larger table and also the individual columns of a data frame is going to be kind of useful for parsing this series of wine reviews that we're going to be playing with in the next series of videos. So that's just kind of a very limited crash course on pandas because pandas is a very extensive Python module and has many, many more components. And we'll be using many of those components in the series of videos, but the two key components that we're going to be making the most use of are the data frame and series objects that they provide. So if you've already seen that before, you could, again, kind of just breeze through this video, put it on 2x speed. Um, but what we're, we're going to be doing later is we'll probably also be peppering in some extra pandas functionality that I did not cover here. We'll be doing that kind of gradually. So hopefully this kind of gives you a very brief crash course in pandas. There's great documentation on the web if you want more information about this module. And uh, I guess we will also kind of sh be showcasing what else this module can do in the coming videos. So if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to, to leave them in the comment section below. You can download the code. It'll be available on my GitHub, and I'll leave a link to that in the description, and I'll see you in the next video.